Hello do-it-yourselfers, I'm back with another episode of Terry's Tool Tips. Now in this video we're going to check out two digital multimeters and some various test leads from Kai Wheats. So let's find out how they measure up. So the people at Kai Wheats sent me two digital multimeters to check out and give them an honest review. So let's dive right in. First off, we're going to do the HT11A. So there it is there. I'll give you a close up of that. It is a digital multimeter. It's a true RMS multimeter, 6,000 counts. It's a voltmeter, auto ranging. It's fast, it's accurate, measures voltage, currents, amps, resistance, diodes, continuity, duty cycle capacitance, temperature, on it goes. So back to the true RMS meter and why is that important? Well, for the most part, for the average do-it-yourselfer, it's not that important, the accuracy, because generally all you're looking for is, to, is the power on or off to the device or circuit you're working on. So a lower quality meter is called an average responding meter, and RMS stands for root means square. Now root means square is a mathematical calculation and it's just basically gives you a more accurate reading of what you're measuring. So true AC sine wave power than your house in a normal circuit, you're not gonna see a difference between the averaging meter and the RMS meter. But when you get to more complex measurements of sine waves that aren't exactly pure, like a square wave or a modified sine wave, your accuracy can get out of whack a little bit with the averaging meter as opposed to an RMS. So like I said, not that important for our needs here, but when you start measuring electronic circuitry such as diodes and other semiconductors, it can be out as much as 40% when you're using just the average measurement and the RMS measuring meter. So back to this meter, looking at some of the popular websites that you can purchase these on, the reviews are quite extensive and actually very good. They're 94% positive. So let's open this up and dive right in. We're going to check it against a, the industry standard, a fluke meter, a couple different fluke meters. And we're going to check AC, we're going to check DC, we're going to check the output from an inverter and do a continuity test and do a couple other checks with it. So let's get started. Take this all apart. Find out what we got in the box. So there's a close up of the box that it came in. The Kai Wheats digital multimeter. That's the HT118A. That's the model number. And inside the box, we had the manual. Very important because we're just gonna touch on a few of the basic features of what this meter can do. There is a lot that it can do. So hang on to that manual. Set of test leads. Nice, good quality neoprene test leads. They almost look like they are a knockoff of the fluke meter leads. And then there's a set of leads for testing temperature. So this is a resistive temperature device, your red and your black lead, and there's your junction where the temperature resistance is measured, and that converts, the meter will convert that to a temperature reading. Then of course it had some batteries, that came with it, so we'll install those inside the battery compartment here just by removing that Phillips screw. And there you have it. Nice looking meter. The Kai Wheats HT118A. So let's do a couple tests here. All right, so our first test we're gonna give it here is just testing standard household outlets. Now this is just off a power bar, but as you can see on the Fluke 189, the industry standard, that is reading 119.456, bouncing around there in that range. That's volts AC. So let's check the Kai Wheats against that fluke. So I'm just going to touch the same leads here. And what do we get? 119.656, 7. Looks like it's just mirroring the readings of the Fluke 189 exactly and it also tells you right on the screen there that you got AC and you're at 60 cycles per second which is with the Fluke you'd have to check Hertz switch it over to the Hertz measurement to see that same reading of the cycles per second so there you go 
holding on that there tight pretty darn accurate 59.9 cycles now and 119.6 reading pretty much exactly the same as the fluke now just for fun we'll throw in the, the fluke t5 1000 into here and just see what it reads on the same same test point and it reads 119 it doesn't get right into the decimal points on that so we're all reading 119 volts give or take if we bounced up over 0.5 i'm sure the fluke t5 1000 would jump to 120. Okay, so now we're going to check DC voltage and compare the two readings from the Fluke 189 to the Kaiwitz 118A, HT118A. Just have to hit the function button on the Kaiwitz to switch it over from AC to DC. So there you see we've got DC on the display. And on the Fluke, you have to turn the dial to the DC volt setting. So we've got the fluke meters leads on the battery right now, reading 12.6 volts DC. Let's check it with the Kaiwitz. See what it comes up with. 12.75, 12.6 on the fluke. So very close to the same reading. Uh, the fluke takes it out one more decimal place. So the 12.75, it's probably reading a little under 12.754 so or else it would jump to 12.76 on the Kiwit. So that is minuscule difference. Not, it's negligible, not even worth uh, noting that they're not quite the same. 12.7, 12.75, and 12.76 on the two meters. So in comparison, same reading. All right, so we're going to test a few theories now. We've got here just a simple Duracell inverter, small wattage, probably about a 300 watt. And you can see we've got voltage in is reading 12.5 or 6 right now, no power being used. And this would have inside of it probably an average responding meter. So not that accurate. That'd be like what you'd get with a cheaper meter that's not RMS, true RMS. This meter says or this uh, inverter says it's putting out 115 volts when you see now on the expensive fluke 189 we're actually reading 119 bouncing around between 119.2 and 7 in that area so let's check the kiwitz against the fluke and again they are the same Essentially the same reading, same accuracy, 119, 118.9 bouncing around, and also not the average measuring meter reading that you're getting on the small on the inverter itself of 115 volts. So there's a substantial difference, about uh, four volts on 120. That's a bit of an accuracy problem with the cheap meter as opposed to these accurate root mean square measuring devices, the Fluke and the Kiwitz. So again, Kiwitz checks out very accurate against the Fluke. Okay, so now we'll check the two meters on resistance. So what I'm gonna use here is the resistive temperature device that came with the Kiwitz meter for measuring temperature. And we'll check that with the Fluke, see what the reading is. Setting our meters to the ohms scale. And on the fluke, we have 13.7, bouncing around 6.9, 13.68, right in that range. Now we'll check the Kiwitz. And there it levels out to about 13.8, 13.7, so basically, again, as accurate and comparable to the Fluke 189. So there's a meter all on its own, and man, if you compare it to the Fluke 189, that's probably in the neighborhood of $500, and this one is around $50, I can't see why you wouldn't choose the Kiwitz over the Fluke, especially for just the do-it-yourself or at home. Of course, that, 
that fluke meter does a whole lot of other stuff, logging and, and min-max re readings and such, but as far as just a, a meter for around the house, you cannot go wrong with the Kai Wheats HT118A. Great little meter. The only one complaint is that the standard leads that came with it are just standard probes and they do have this little extra guard that comes off to give you longer probes here. However, I would like to see it come with some alligator clips and I had to order the extra lead set, test lead kit, and that comes with a bunch of other options for, for leads here where you've got little alligator clips, little alligator clips like that and little grabber hooks that you can use to grab onto finer wires. But as far as a meter goes, can't beat it. Okay, let's move on to the Kaiweets Smart Digital Multimeter. And this one is the ST600Y. Now a smart meter means that all you gotta do is plug in the probes and touch to whatever you want to check for and it knows. It knows if you're, it detects that it's AC voltage you're looking for and it'll give you the readout. If you touch two wires together, it detects that you're looking for resistance or continuity and it automatically gives you the reading that you're looking for. So when you turn the meter on, it's in smart mode. Came with everything you see here, nice harder sided carrying case to put it in. Came with your temperature probe again, your RTD, resistive temperature device, temperature probes, and a set of meter leads. Again, they got a little protector, extra protective jacket on these uh, probes so that you can shorten them up or take them off if you need to get into a slot, say like the AC, AC uh, receptacle or anything that you want to check AC voltage with where you got to go in a little further. You can take the little guard off, as did the other meter. Again, came with a user manual, should have added that. Batteries were installed, but they still had their protective uh, coatings on them. Batteries were AA or AAA batteries in a set of two, but they were wrapped in plastic. So you had to take the back off and take the plastic off and install them correctly as per how it shows on the back where the positive and negatives go. Now let's do a few measurements, checking it against again the Fluke 189 to see how the accuracy is. So now we're gonna check for AC power again and, and compare it against the Fluke 189. And I'm gonna assume that if the readings are all pretty much the same, that the technology inside this ST600Y is the same as in the 118A, only this is a digital smart meter. So you don't have to set the scale. When you turn it on, it's already in smart mode. So whatever I do with these probes, if I put them on my hands here and check, it's going to go to ohms current and, or sorry, resistance. And it's going to show that I've got a relatively high resistance through my body. But if I touch the leads right together, it's going to pretty much zero out to no resistance. So it knows without me touching the dial that that was resistance and continuity I was looking for. And now we're going to go and check to see how it compares on the voltage reading with the fluke. So here we go. Slipped off there. Checking, it's analyzing. And once I touch it on properly, we're at 1.19.9, 120. As you see, the fluke bounces to the same readings as does the Kai Wheats. So these are deadly accurate as opposed to the 189 fluke. And again, I won't bother going through all the other tests because I'm going to assume that the technology is the same and it's just as accurate as uh, expensive Fluke 189. So thanks for watching another episode of Terry's Tool Tips. Today, reviewing the Kai Wheats multimeters, the ST600Y and the HT118A. Highly recommended for their price point. You can't beat them accurate they stood up to the test against the fluke 189 quality stuff here quite like them i'd highly recommend it so thanks again for watching don't forget what i said about the like subscribe click in the bell and give me a thanks if you'd like that'd be super terry peterman the internet electrician